Okay guys, so I haven't uploaded a video in quite some time. The last time I actually uploaded something was a couple of weekends ago when I was up at John's uh, blowing up fruit on his capacitors. <laughs> that was pretty good fun. So as you can see we've changed locations and also you may have noticed we've changed quality because I've got a uh, a new camera. It's the Ca Canon Legria R68 which I've been waiting for since, I know I was waiting for since Christmas and then Canon said the release date was supposed to be February uh, and then it was actually ended up being available in shops in March so the other day it was available and I went and picked one up and here we go, here we are so yeah, pretty cool uh, all set up and just got a message <laughs> yeah, we're in the lab, we've got some other bits and pieces that you will see later on, that's a 20kb ZVS setup I've been working on recently you'll see what that's for later on and also we got the rest of the lab all set up here. I haven't really done very many videos in the lab before, but yeah, we're pretty well set up. So today I want to talk about uh, this Verac here. Now this Verac I haven't actually been able to use for quite some time up in this lab. It's been it's been under my bed most of the time, but actually got it out a couple of weekends ago to use it and switch it on and bang, the circuit breaker da uh, downstairs trips out. It's a B32. But obviously, this is a 15 amp Variac, it's actually a Regavolt LAB715. And the inrush current on that this Variac is, is, is about twice as much as 15, so you're looking at 30, 35 even. So, depending on what time in the, um, the sine wave you actually turn on at, if it's crossing the, the zero volt, you won't be too, too bad. But as it's crossing the peaks and you turn it on, you've got maximum voltage there, and uh, it will trip every single time. So um, what I've done, I've modified this Variac to actually have a soft start and there's several ways you can do this guys. I know there's this way where I've got this device over here. This is what's known as an NTC thermistor. So when it's cold the resistance is high, when it's hot the resistance is low. So it's a negative temperature coefficient thermistor. And these uh, these work, they're pretty good, but the only thing about running these in labs and inside that I'm not too keen about is the fact that they run warm, so yeah, maybe. You can you can hook them up to your Variac and just have them basically just terminated onto your rail and if, there, if there's enough space in, space in there for it, then it'll be it'll be fine. It won't as long as you make sure it doesn't touch any cables or anything else which is you don't want getting warm. It'll, it'll run fine, but really this very is a little bit cramped on the inside where the actual terminal plate is you just see right just now when I uh, open her up and uh, yeah, I'll show you why I didn't actually use this in the end I might use it for another type of Variac I've got out in the garage so yeah so if I show you inside this this Variac here what I'll do is I'll just pop the top off it I've already undone the screws as you saw at the beginning of the video Okay, that's the top popped off. And just take the cover off. There we go, guys. Move the screws, don't want to lose those. Try to get a good angle for you to see in. Hold on a second. Alright, so just spin that around so you guys can see inside. So Anyone that's actually looked inside a Variac will actually notice straight away there's a bit more going on inside this Variac than normal. As you can see here, this is the Variac's normal um, connections here and here. We've got the neutral here, and we've got the live over there, and also because I haven't gone on to number five, but we've got the overwind. So, as it is, also we've got the brush here, guys. So as it was, as soon as you turn it on, it applies voltage from number one to number five between here and here. And because it's a magnetic core, it will just basically trip out. So yeah, it's the inrush is too high. So what I've done is wired a solid state relay, you can see here, and a timer. And the timer is set to about a second basically, which is all you need just to just to just to turn this on on a, um, a half and then fill afterwards. You'll also notice there's a little resistor down here. That's a 500 ohm resistor, and that is in series with your input, which is that one there. So basically, as it is, the live comes in, 
it goes to the solid state relay. When the solid state relay isn't on, it goes down to the resistor, through the resistor, and then back up to the other side of the relay, which currently still isn't on, and then it goes to the live in, which is terminal number four on the, the Verax. So yeah, it's in series. As soon as the relay switches, it will switch the solid state relay on, which will basically bypass that resistor, and then it will put full voltage onto the Variac, via number four. So basically that's how it works, and that's how I've got it set up. I used the solid state relay purely because of the space, as you can see it's pretty it's pretty cramped in there, you know. It's not too much space, so yeah, and I over I did overrate the relay also to 30 amps, which is double what this can this can actually take. Purely because of I want it to run cool. I don't really want it to run too hot in there, and these these do get quite warm. So at 13 amps all day long, that should run pretty cool. It won't be it won't be mega cold, but it'll just be warm, so that'll run nicely. And that's pretty much it. That's the only modifications I did on the inside of this. Everything else is as standard. I did just rewire the whole thing because the original wiring was a little bit, yeah, you know what I mean, just a little bit puny, you know. So I, I just wired it throughout in, in 1.5, all the same, tri-rated cable, crimps, everything you need. And basically just doing it like that. So I'll show you it working now. If I just put the lid on. Okay. Put the knob back on. Set to zero. That's, that's pretty close. And then plug it in. Let's just go and get the, the plug for it. Plug him in. Right, take my little bit out the top there, that's stuck in there. Right, so, zoom out a bit. Okay, so if I show you this with a voltage meter, you'll basically see what's going on. So if I just hook this up carefully. Neutral in. Okay, live in, those are hooked up. Obviously be careful with these panel meters guys, the backs are live. This is for test. And I'll just put that there so it's in sight. So basically I'm going to switch them on via the power button here. And you'll see the voltage rise to about halfway. And then about a second later you'll see it come up to full voltage which should be around about 250 actually around here funnily enough. You have actually got a high voltage for this place. So you'll see that will happen within a second so watch quickly guys I just turn the output up to 100% so you can actually see because we're measuring the output we want to see it go okay so three two one and there you go so that is basically how it works it turns it on at halfway and then the relay kicks in and it takes the resistor out of series and it just goes up the full voltage after that so I'll do it a few times just to prove that this is working it doesn't trip the the, uh, the breaker downstairs at all. That's it again. It's about 238 volts at the moment, providing this is accurate, which we don't really know. And then go again. So yeah, it rises to about just over 100 volts, and then it, it just kicks out the resistor, and it goes up to 238, 240 volts, really. So yeah, that works pretty well. And let's switch that off a second. Break it down. And do this. Try it on the load. Say like this 2000 watt linear halogen lamp, E40 base, all wired up for test. Put that one in. Probably when it's going to get a bit bright for the camera, maybe. We shall see. We shall test it, hey? Let's hook him up.
Right, so zero volts. It's going to get fairly bright. You'll see that get fairly, fairly bright. And we'll switch them on. Okay, that's ready to go. So we'll turn them up. Just get them to start glowing. There we go, starting to glow. And then, so should we crank them up to 50? Yeah, we'll go up to 50. It's going to get pretty bright, guys. Oof. Alright, that's 50%. Oof, that's pretty bright. Alright, we'll turn them up full brightness just for a bit, guys. There we go, full brightness. Oof, that's hot. You can feel the heat coming off that. And then back down again. There you go, still glowing a bit. <laughs> we'll switch them off. Alright, so yeah, that's basically it, guys. I have a, uh, a working 15 amp Varac for the lab, and I have no problems with actual tripping it out every time I go to use it. There is another way of doing it which is to remove the breaker downstairs and put a type C in there which is basically a, a motor rated circuit breaker which would be good if if I wanted to. The reason why I didn't is because I want this very act to work. Basically I can take it anywhere, plug it in, switch it on and it's not going to trip anyone else's breaker. You know, I'd have to rewire their house to use it. It'll work wherever I take it. So pretty cool. There's a little 2.5 amp breaker there and that one doesn't actually have so much of an inrush so that one's not a problem see this one just switches on there we go happy as Larry all the way up all the way down no problem so yeah that's uh, that's it guys hope you all enjoyed the video and uh, we'll see you all again next time cheers guys bye